Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are going to introduce triple integrals and rectangular coordinates to you in this video. If you think back to our video on the unit of area in rectangular coordinates when we had double integrals, so we had a little bit of area, some box was some width times some height was that area, and as we crammed many, many more rectangles into an area in the plane, we thought of each of them as being a microscopic amount of area, our unit of area, and that was some microscopic width times some microscopic height. So our unit of area for double integrals in rectangular coordinates was dA, and that was dx dy, or dy dx. And if we wanted to find the area of a region R, we used a double integral dA, and based on the shape of that region, we decided if we wanted to integrate dx dy or dy dx. We can do a similar thing with volume and triple integrals, just like we did with area and double integrals in rectangular coordinates. So instead of just some unit of area, we will be thinking of some unit of volume. Think of it as a box, not necessarily an exact cube, but some rectangular box that has length and width and height. And so we get that the volume of this box would be some amount of x times some amount of y times some amount of z, and if we cram many, many more cube-like shapes into a region in three-dimensional space, then they'll get smaller and smaller as we fill it with more boxes. So we'll get some microscopic amount of volume for each box, and it will have microscopic dimensions of x, y, and z for its volume. So our unit for volume with a triple integral is going to be dv, and that will be dx dy dz or this expression actually stated in any order. We could have dy, dx, dz. There are six actual orders that we can come up with here because we have three of these. So you notice we're saying volume of domain d instead of area over region r. So when we have a triple integral, we're just saying over some three-dimensional space, some area in r3, then we're going to call it a domain d. So we'll have the triple integral dv if we want to find the volume. And again, there are lots of ways that you can write this dv. We're going to go ahead and focus on this order in our video here, dz, dy, dx, just so you get a consistent approach to how to think through getting bounds with triple integrals and rectangular coordinates. So for our first example here, this is actually a volume that we worked out in our double integral video. You can check that out at the link shown here. We want to find the volume between the xy plane and this plane, this slanted plane here at the top. z equals 6 minus 3x minus 2y above the unit square, and the unit square is just from 0 to 1 in both the x direction and the y direction. We have a unit square here in the first quadrant in our xy plane. So if we are going to actually set this up as a double integral, we set it up this way before. We said well, we need to just put our surface as our height function inside the integral, and then we figured out doing dx dy or dy dx, our unit square was just going to be 0 to 1 for both of those variables. If we're setting this up as a triple integral, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this in the order dz dy dx, and we'll just explain to you how to think through finding your bounds when you have a specific order written. So remember before when we did these with double integrals to find bounds, we would fix some value of the outer variable and draw through the region in the increasing direction of the inner variable. What we'll do with a triple integral, since we're integrating here dz first on the inside, we are going to fix some x and y value and draw through in the increasing z direction to find our bounds. So let's imagine what we're doing there. If we fix some x and y value, some point x comma y, so think about if we fix some x, y coordinate, and we draw through in the increasing z direction, then we are going to enter our region here, our domain, at the xy plane, and we are going to come out of the region at the top, this surface here that is the top plane. So entering the region will be our lower bound, and exiting the region will be our upper bound. So the xy plane here, the bottom there, will be at z equals zero. And then coming out of the top will be the equation for that plane, in terms of z equals. So that will be z equals 6 minus 3x minus 2y for our upper bound, therefore z. Now we continue as we did before. We think about our region in the plane. Now we're just in terms of x and y, back down to basically the idea of a double integral, right? So I have a double integral dy dx left on the outside of what I've already done. So from 0 to 1, in each direction. This is sort of our region R in the plane that we used to think of. And so our y bounds then, of course, are going to go from 0 to 1. 
and our x bounds are going to go from 0 to 1 also. So when you're starting out, feel free to write these x equals y equals z equals on your integrals. Remember that we don't have to do that, so we can simply go back and write these integrals without the variable markers on them if we choose. We can say 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and then 0 to 6 minus 3x minus 2y. And we would be integrating dz dy dx. Okay, we'll go from the inside out. So doing this integral first means that we will keep our 0, 1 integrals outside first, not doing those yet. And then integral dz, the antiderivative with respect to z of, this is really just a function 1, right, is going to give us z. We'll just get z in the middle. And our bounds, now we want to evaluate from 0 to 6 minus 3x minus 2y. And once we figure that out, then we will integrate dy and then dx. Okay, so we'll plug in our bounds for z. Now this is pretty easy because we just have a z, right? So we are going to get our double integral 0 to 1. And then we will have in the middle here 6 minus 3x minus 2y minus our bottom bound, which was 0. So really minus nothing there dy dx. And what you might notice now, if I scroll up just a touch, is that we have basically the exact same integral that we started out with when we did this as a double integral, right? I have 0 to 1, 0 to 1, same function dy dx, exactly what we had before. And so we'll go ahead and continue with this integral. So now we are integrating dy as our next step. So integrating 6 minus 3x minus 2y dy, we'll get 6y minus 3xy minus y squared and we'll evaluate that from 0 to 1 and do our dx last. So here we'll get the integral from 0 to 1. Plugging in 1 for y first we'll get 6, then we'll get minus 3x, then squaring it we'll get minus 1, and plugging in 0 for each y will give us nothing there, so we just get that. And we'll integrate that dx. Let's combine our like terms, I think, at least. So we'll say integral from 0 to 1 of 5 minus 3x dx. And now integrating that, these are pretty easy as well. So we just get 5x integrating dx. Here, power rule gives us 3 halves x squared. Plugging in from 0 to 1. And then if we plug in 1, we will get 5 minus 3 halves. If we plug in 0, we will get 0 for each of those terms there. And so here we get 5 minus 3 halves actually ends up being 7 over 2. Okay, the big thing that you'll notice though is when we have no function in here, when this, this is really a function of 1, right? But when no function is stated, um, this triple integral will actually, after the first step, work out to be equivalent to the same integral that we would have set up as a double integral once we get to this point here and integrate dy dx. Okay, looking at one more example here, we want to find the volume of a prism in the first octant bounded by the planes z equal 4 and y equals 6 minus 3x. So this top plane here is going to be z equals 4, if you can tell by that. And then in the first octant really means, so the x, z plane here gives us this boundary, and then this back boundary here is really the y, z plane. So this front slanted diagonal plane here that we see, so this piece right there is the y equals 6 minus 3x. Okay, so what we'll need to do is set up our triple integral, and I'm going to go ahead and do this in the same order as before, just to give you another chance to practice doing this order. So I'm going to say dz dy dx. And remember what that means. That means we will fix some x and y and draw through in the increasing z direction to determine our bounds for this first integral here. This will be our z bounds for the inside one. So if I just pick some x comma y point and I think about drawing through in the increasing z direction, I'm going to enter the region here in the xy plane and I'm going to exit the region here at the top. Well, this point here 
is definitely z equals zero. And this plane up here is the flat plane z equals four. So I enter at z equals zero. I exit the region at z equals four. And now going back to double integral idea, think about the base of my region here like we used to with a double integral. Think about that being some region R. And that's definitely going to be triangular in the first quadrant, right? So we'll get something that looks like that. And that would be our base. And so then the question is, how do I get my remaining bounds? Well, we've already taken care of dz, so now we need to focus on dy dx. If we're focusing on dy dx, remember that means to choose an outer value and draw through in the inner value direction. So I need to choose some x value and just draw through in the y direction. So if I pick, let's say, this x value here, then I am going to draw through in that direction. I enter at the horizontal axis, if this is in the xy plane, then that is actually y equals zero. And I'm coming out this diagonal line here, that's the top of my region. And that is definitely the line y equals six minus three x. So we can see that that will be our bound there, six minus three x. And that's okay, we can have x as a bound for y because x is on the outside of y when we have the order of integral. If for some reason I was getting a z bound here, I wouldn't want that because z is on the inside of y. I only want to refer to variables as bounds when they are outside in the order of integration that we're going to do. So since this is x and dx is on the outside, we're okay there. Those are our y bounds. And then remember, these should always be constant bounds for our outer integral. So my lower value for x here is going to be zero on the axis. And then to figure out the farthest right value for x, I would need to know what is this intercept well, if you set y equal to zero, that will give you the intercept, right? So this will be when zero equals six minus three x. And I think you can probably figure out after a step or two of algebra or looking at this that x is going to be two here. So we'll be integrating from zero to two on this integral. Okay, let's go ahead and do our inner integral evaluation here. So we have zero to two, and we are going to also keep zero to six minus three x but integrating just dz is going to give us z. And we'll be evaluating from zero to four. And we'll do our dy dx after that. So next we'll plug in our bounds. We'll have zero to two, and we'll have zero to six minus three x. And we'll get four and then minus zero, so that will just give us four in here. And now this is down to a double integral. So now we'll just integrate four dy with the bounds zero to six minus three x. So we will get zero to two. Integrating four dy will give us four y from zero to six minus three x. We'll do our dx after we plug in our bounds. So we will have zero to two left on the outside plugging in here. If I multiply this by four, plugging in for y, then I will get 24 minus 12x minus, if I plug in zero, I'm going to get zero there. And so we'll integrate that dx. Obviously the minus zero is gonna go away. You can do some factoring out of constants if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave everything in there and not worry about pulling out any multiples constant multiples. So I have zero to two integral of just 24 minus 12 X here at the end as my last step integrating DX. Then here I will get 24 X and then power rule will get an over two here. So we'll actually get six X squared there and we'll be evaluating lastly from zero to two. So if I plug in two, then I will get 48 minus six times four, minus plugging in zero, we'd get zero everywhere there. And so we'll get 48 minus 24, and that will give us 24 as our volume for this solid using our triple integral. So as we're moving from double to triple integrals, we want to be comfortable with the types of quantities that we're calculating. If we just calculate a double integral over a region dA, so dx dy or dy dx, that's going to give us the area inside the region R if we just have a function of one. If we have some other function of x or y or both that is not one, then what we're doing is thinking of this as a height function 
over some region in doing the double integral with a height function inside of it can give us some physical quantity like volume under our function above our region r. We can do a similar thing from here, moving from this to this idea of a triple integral with no function inside. This will calculate volume inside a domain, so treating the volume under f above the region r as just some domain d in 3 space, if we set up our z, y, and x bounds we can do the volume as a triple integral. And additionally if we include a function inside of our integral that is not just one, then we're no longer calculating just volume. We might think of this like a density function on our volume so that each piece of our volume, our region in three-dimensional space, has a different density and it's defined by this function. And if we integrate some volume with a density function, and then what we're really doing is something like finding the mass of the solid with this density function. Okay everyone, hopefully this gives you an idea of how double and triple integrals relate, how to set up your z, y, and x bounds in rectangular coordinates for your triple integrals. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.